Good day ladies and gentlemen. Today's video we will be doing the oil cooler gasket on this 2018 Alfa Romeo Giulia TI Sport. Now the reason why the valve cover is off, the belt is off as well as the harmonic balancer and the cover is for good reason. Um, we recommended that this customer have his timing chain cover resealed. It was leaking pretty bad. If you guys want to check out that video, it is on my channel. I'll try and post a link up for it if you guys want to check that out. But on um, today's video, we're going to be doing the oil cooler gasket. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, we are going to evacuate the air conditioning, drain the coolant for the turbocharger as well as the engine and remove the heat shields. Let's get started with that. Now to get these heat shields off, it is a little bit complicated, I will admit. Um, they are somewhat of a pain in the butt, but what you're gonna wanna remove are a bunch of 10 millimeters. So down here is a 10 millimeter bolt. You're gonna wanna remove that, this 10 millimeter nut, this 10 millimeter bolt, this 10 millimeter bolt here, as well as if you can see that guy right there that 10 millimeter bolt and then there's also one that's underneath this coolant pipe here see that coolant pipe this guy right here you're gonna have to remove this coolant pipe it's two 10 millimeter nuts and then it also secures onto that 10 millimeter bolt that we already removed down there or that we're going to remove i should say and also there is another 10 millimeter bolt that's down here that holds the coolant hose down there to a bracket. Um, you'll see it once you go to kind of feel your hand there to uh, find it. Now this will be easier if we go ahead and discharge the AC so that way we could disconnect the, the AC lines and move them around. That way we have more room to to get around things. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that first. I'm gonna discharge the AC. I know we said we're gonna take these off first, but let's go ahead and discharge the AC, uh, get some stuff out of the way, and then we'll start working on taking this shield off as well as this coolant pipe off with the, the two 10 millimeter nuts. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. While we have the vehicle's AC system, being discharged at the moment just wanted to remind you guys that since we are going to be tapping into the cooling system removing lines and whatnot go ahead and drain your cooling system right now while you have a chance and the car is kind of just being dead weight at this time um, while the ac machine's going so i went ahead and um pulled the hose down here for one of the uh turbocharger uh, coolant lines. I just went ahead and pulled it off, let it drain, and then the other one that I pulled is this hose here for the engine coolant system side. So that way, they just let it both drain out. So we got to empty, empty. That way, when we pull that hose off, that's back there. Hopefully, it won't make too much of a mess, and we got most of the stuff out of there. So um, just wanted to remind you guys of that. So um, yeah. So we got that AC line out from the evaporator back there, as you can see. Um, it was just a 10 millimeter nut holding it on, same as the high side line there that's still connected. And all we did was we took off the lower hose there at the heater core, we left the top one alone. Um, I don't think we're gonna be needing to remove that one, so we left it alone. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove the rest of this low side line here which i know you're probably saying well why don't you just remove it all out at once well because i do things a certain way i don't like to struggle with certain things and so i figured this way is easier so i'm gonna go ahead and remove that five millimeter hex bolt there to remove remove the rest of this uh low side line here that way we can gain access to the bolt that secures the coolant pipe that's going up this way which connects up here like we described earlier so uh let's go ahead and take care of that so we got that line out of the way as you can see 
now we have a lot more space and everything to see so the next thing we're taking off is this coolant hose which connects here and then down here i don't know if you can see the tip of the bolt Let's see if i could uh zoom in a little bit here uh, the tip of the bolt right there you can see it that's actually in below this hose it's sitting in the middle here and um, what it's doing is securing this hose to the bracket that's there holding the uh, adjacent hose, or I should say the hose underneath it. <laughs> it goes to the water pump. So it's kind of holding them both together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that bolt. We're gonna remove this bolt here. They're both 10 millimeters. And then we're gonna come back here and we're going to remove all this stuff will get out of my way and cooperate. Um, the two 10 millimeter nuts that are securing the pipe here. This gasket is a one time use gasket. Make sure you replace it. You cannot reuse it. If you try to reuse it, you put this thing back together, it is guaranteed to leak and replacing it after you've already put everything back together is a pain in the ass. Do not ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're gonna take care of that now. And um, this should open up a lot more for us so that way we can get these heat shields off to be able to get the cat out of the way. Pull the hose is removed. You can see there's a oxygen wire downstream sensor there. Um, so you can see we got tons of room now. So let's go ahead and take off the heat shields for the catalytic converter, which I explained to you guys already. There's a 10 millimeter there, 10 millimeter there. Uh, back here, we have another 10 millimeter. Uh, let's see if I can get in there. There it is. You can see it right there. 10 millimeter there. And I think that's it. Oh, no, we don't have to take that one off. Um, I think that is it. If there's any other ones, I'll be sure to update this on the next clip but let's take those off and see that should be it just as i thought there is another bolt and i had to keep my hand on it and do this with one hand uh, so bear with me here hopefully i can get it that 10 millimeter bolt there don't forget that once you get that out this whole piece should come out fairly easy as you can see it's pretty much there just got to take that one 10 millimeter out oh people 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 <laughs> this damn heat shield i'm not lying to you put up a fight all the bolts came out nice and easy except for one that guy way back there as you can tell i tore the damn shield because it was such a pain in the butt so we're gonna end up replacing the heat shield afterwards uh, with a new one. But yeah, that was a pain in the butt. So next thing up is the catalytic converter, which we're going to remove. There's two 13 millimeter bolts. And then there's also two 13 millimeter nuts. There's one here. And then there's one that you can't see under there. It's buried under there. But with an extension, some creative thinking and that 13 millimeter socket combination, you should be able to get it out without a problem. And then um, we also have to disconnect it from underneath. It connects to the exhaust pipe. That's gonna be another uh, two 13 millimeter nuts. And when I get under there, I'm gonna show you a nice little, uh, how could I put it? A nice little roadblock you might come into that's going to fight with you as well to get this thing out. So let's get it done. This car has been nothing short of a pain in the butt today. <laughs> so um, once we get the two 13 millimeter nuts and the two 13 millimeter bolts off top that connects the catalytic converter to the turbo, next you have to remove, there's two 15 millimeter bolts, one that goes there and one on the other side. Once you remove those two, remove these two 13 millimeter nuts and loosen the 16 millimeter nut and then open this clamp all the way as much as you can and pull this hose out from the cat.
Now in order to pull this catalytic converter out, we're gonna be pulling it out through the top. But in order to get it out, we gotta remove the cowl, which is secured by, if we just pull this back, we got these push pins that uh, hold it in place. This one, this two. Uh, on the other side, I believe there's another, there's three here. Four is here. And then you also have to take this cover off on both sides. And then once you get that off, um, you're gonna wanna pull these foam pieces out. And there's gonna be another one hidden right there on each side. So that's to remove the cowl. Well, first things first, we're gonna get these wiper blades off which are 17 millimeter nuts. And underneath the 17 millimeter nut, there's a washer. So be careful you don't lose those washers. Um, and so I'll take those off and keep on pushing. Now, a trick to getting the wiper blades off of the arm here, um, they do make a tool that you can use. I don't like to use them because if it's really, really stuck, you could actually bend these um, thin metal walls on the side of the wiper blades here. So I don't typically like to use a tool. What I usually do is I just take my hand here and I put pressure here on the joint to kind of make it flex in. So go ahead and push down like that. You hear a click. It means it's flexed. So now you can see it's flexed. So put your thumb here on the flexible joint, move it up and down, and with your fingers underneath the arm, you're gonna pull up. And that's how you take the wiper off of the arm. And when we go to reassemble, I'll show you a trick on how to line these up perfectly. So we got the cowl off. This is what it should look like once you got it off. Next, what we're gonna remove is this cross support bar here. So make sure you remove the O2 sensor that's a uh, connector that's clamped into here simple just uh pull back that tab and then slide it out um, also the wiring that passes through here so we're going to take this off i'm moving the two 13 millimeter um bolts there secure it there's one there there's one there uh, once we remove this we'll be able to pull that cat straight out through the top now that we'll have the clearance all righty so now we're underneath the car here um, this is the bracket that holds the backside of the catalytic converter and the strap that comes across the front of it. it bolts up here and here. As you can see, I broke one, so I'm going to have to drill that out and um, get it out of there so we can replace the hardware. But anyway, I already loosened the three bolts that hold this bracket on. It's three 16 millimeter bolts. You're going to want to remove those three to pull the bracket out because it kind of covers the corner of the oil core. This is the oil core here. Um, so we're replacing this, but in order to replace this, we got to take this off. And then we're also taking this off of the water pump. So uh, we're going to get these hoses taken off. There's three of them. Then we're going to pull this off and disconnect the main hose that's right there going into it. I believe they refer to that as the water pump inlet hose. Um, and once we get that out, we'll have a better shot at getting some oil from over here. Um, which, once we get that stuff out of the way, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, pull off the wheel. And we should be able to see, we should see it right there. We should be able to work in this space here in order to get the cooler out. So let's move on. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, there is your oil cooler. This guy right here. <laughs> now there's six bolts that secure this um, unit to the block of the engine. Um, they are one-time use bolts. They have some sealant on them at the ends. I believe it's uh, Loctite. Um, they want you to discard those bolts after you remove them. So that's what we will be doing. All we're doing today is replacing the gasket on this. Um, so 
we're gonna go ahead and get this oil cooler off. And then once I get it off, I'll show you guys the gasket and how uh, we're gonna replace it with the new one. One thing that I will mention that I forgot to is that this wire loom here, this connector that goes to here, this guy here, make sure you disconnect it and then you're gonna remove the tab here, push pin that locks inside of there. Also, um, as far as the size of the bolts that hold the inner, I'm sorry, the oil cooler on, they're all T30s. So you got six T30s that you're gonna remove from the outside of this oil cooler. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there because I forgot to mention that to you guys. So uh, we're gonna get this off now and move forward. All right, so we got all six of those T30 bolts off. And I got the phone in here to kind of give you guys a bird's eye view of what's going down. We got everything out. We're ready to pull this thing out. So before I do, I did want to mention a side note. Make sure that you guys drain the oil. I know I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but make sure you drain the oil and the coolant both before doing this job. Because once you pull this oil cooler off, you're going to have a big amount of oil coming out if you didn't drain it and it's going to be very very messy i'm not sure how it's going to react right now when i pull this off but we will see i don't have any oil in it now since i just did the timing chain job let's see not bad i don't see a terrible amount of oil coming out there's some but nothing we can't clean up once we're done with the job so let's go ahead and uh, get this gasket out and replace it on the table. Okay, so this is the oil cooler here. As you can see, this is the clamp that went to the uh, hose that came off of air. I just left it there because um, I was fighting with it for the most part. But I'm going to take it off and replace the, all the hose clamps. Every time I take one of these off, I go ahead and replace them with the screw-on clamp just because I feel more comfortable with those. Um, this is the bottom of the oil cooler, the part that mounts up to the engine. Um, this right here is the old gasket that fit onto the oil cooler itself. And this is the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and place the new one on the oil cooler. And we're going to get the oil cooler fitted up to the engine with the new bolts installed. Um, because remember, we're not reusing those bolts. The manual says to not reuse them because I guess there's a uh, some thread sealant on it and they're probably stretch bolts uh, which means once you torque them they stretch to a certain point and they cannot be reused if you try to reuse them they either snap or uh, they just don't uh, secure the part that they're supposed to be securing as well due to the fact that they're stretched out and they'll bottom out eventually so it won't press tight against the back part of this to uh Keep it tight against the engine so uh we're gonna go ahead and put the new gasket on clean this up a little bit uh, clean the mating surface on the engine and put it back together okay so our oil cooler is on i went ahead and removed the hose clamp there as well as the hose clamps from the two hoses um, that go to the end of the water pump i put that extended housing back on as well as the rubber hose that attaches to the oil cooler that goes up to that extended piece on the water pump housing. Um, um, before we move on, I wanted to mention that we went ahead and torqued these T30 bolts for the oil cooler to nine foot-pounds. So don't forget that, nine foot-pounds on those T30s, there's six of them. So, Let's get this uh, extended housing onto the water pump next. Connect the hoses, add our new spin type, or I should say screw type hose clamps, and then as well as the catalytic converter bracket, mounting bracket, I should say. If you're thinking of uh, replacing the clamps for the hoses, these are the clamps that I have. They're by Worth. Um, and they are size 12 by 22, 12 to 22. 
um, in case you were thinking about replacing those. That's the size. These are the ones that I'm going with. This is that hose that I was telling you guys about. And, uh, it connects to, uh, let's see if I get back in here, to the bottom of the oil cooler here. So, I'm gonna keep going with this, but I just wanted to advise you guys of that in case you guys wanted to replace these. I always replace the coolant clamps because I just, don't like to reuse spring-loaded cl uh, clamps. I usually like to replace them with screw type, so that way I know that they're not gonna come back off. So this is the extended uh, piece that I was talking about that goes on the end of the water pump. Um, before I put this on, I wanted to advise you guys that if you're putting this back on and this seal is dry, you might want to go ahead and get some lubricant um, and rub some lubricant on there maybe spray some wd-40 on there just a very light amount so that it doesn't get pinched or uh, damaged when you're pushing it back in because i've seen that happen and it's also happened to me on other vehicles so just make sure you lubricate that rubber seal a little bit before you slide it back in and then as far as the bolts go these are the uh the bolts uh, if i remember right these are t20s um there's no torque spec for them so what i would say is uh unfortunately good and tight which i don't usually like to say but um just don't go cranking down on them super tight so that you break them. But, um, trust your judgment on those. Uh, so, yeah, I'll put this back in now. All right, so we have the extension to the water pump there on. We got our hoses on. And if you notice, I do this purposely. All these hose clamps I make sure that I face them all out towards the direction of the easiest path to get them, get access to them. So that way, if I ever have to take this off for whatever reason again, I see it's right there. Easy access. So, got our cat bracket back in, tighten down our 316 millimeter bolts there. We're going to plug in our connector down under there. Uh, we're going to run the wiring how it was before by attaching it right in there in that hole that's where that push pin goes and then the connector is going to go to here and uh, once we get that in we'll bring the car back down and throw our cat back in so before we throw the cat in i wanted to mention to you guys that this gasket here this white gasket that goes inside of the turbo, there's a little groove that fits into it. That gasket cannot be reused. That is a one-time use fiberglass gasket. I will show you guys what a new one looks like and I will pull this one out so you guys can understand what I'm talking about as far as the groove goes inside of the end of the turbo there so let me pull that out for you okay so this is the new gasket here which we will be installing the old gasket looks like this <laughs> as you can tell this gasket had to be picked out of there utilizing our 90 degree pick here so we use this to pick that out and the reason why i say pick it out is because if you notice my pick here to show you guys this is like a channel a valley if you will um, and the gasket sits in there so when you guys put this cat back in you get one shot so you put the cat in put the mounting bolts on um, you put the bolts on that hold it on the on the uh, support there and once you tighten these two screws and two nuts down, that's it. There's no going back. If you wanna go back because you forgot something, you're screwed and you're gonna to have to replace that gasket again. There's no using that a second time, that's it. Once you crush it, that's it. It's formed already and you cannot reuse it. So 
let's get this gasket in. Let's get it fitted, get the cat on, make sure there's nothing else that we gotta do and then torque down these bolts that hold the cat. So let's get that started now. And on a side note here, since I got, you know, I got the gasket on. Uh, if you can kind of tell, there is a slight um, exposure of the gasket. It sticks out a little bit. That's why I was saying once you put that cat on, it crushes in and that's it. It becomes flat with this surface for the most part. And that's it. You can't, it doesn't puff back out. That's, that's it. Um, but anyway, on the side note here that I was getting to was that I've had multiple people ask me, you know, when they first start up their Julia, it makes this loud noise. You know, it's like, ah. what is that noise? That's the noise right there. For some reason, uh, Alpha didn't think that when they assembled this turbo, or you know the linkages and all that that this wasn't gonna make noise or maybe they did and they just didn't care but that's the noise right there that's the annoying noise you hear when you first start up your julia stelvio anything that has a 2.0 liter on it that's it right there you can see the play in it and this is not because of excessive mileage car only has I think 55,000 miles on it so I've seen brand new units do this it's not something that's due to mileage or wear it's something that I guess Alpha didn't think about or I don't know I don't think it does it on the new ones the new new ones the 2022s or the 21s um, you guys will have to let me know in the comments but I'm pretty sure they still have the same issue but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. And then um, for those of you that have the turbocharger under boost code, this is the reason here. Because of this, let's see if I get it. This guy here, over time, this linkage here will wear. And what happens is, if I can close the damn thing, here we go. Um, the hole that this rod passes through will become oblong. It won't be a perfect circle anymore. And what happens is because of that, this wastegate does not close completely, does not shut off all the way. So then boost will escape and you will have an under boost code. The ECM will see that. This one's still good. We don't have any issues with it. So we will uh, let the customer know that his turbo has appeared in good shape. I don't know if it's been replaced. It doesn't look like it has. It looks like it's a stock turbo, but in any way, I mean, not that it's, if it were replaced by a dealer, it wouldn't be a stock turbo, but I'm just saying like, it looks, appears as it has not been replaced before, so. Um, let's get this cat back on and uh, move forward. So we have our catalytic converter on, all right? I think you guys a tip though. We're not tightening these bolts all the way. We have them in finger tight right now. The two nuts at the bottom, the two bolts on the top, we have them finger tight. The reason why is because we still have to get the two bolts in for the bracket that supports the cat through the middle, as well as the pipe that's back there that connects to the side of the uh, catalytic converter. So that pipe is a huge pain in the butt to get um, to get lined up. You can kind of see it there. Um, so we're gonna get the clamp on there, get the bolt on with the nut, and hope we get it lined up um, easily and we don't have to fight with it. Once we get that one lined up, we can go ahead and secure the two 16 millimeter bolts that secure the center uh, strap that support the center of the cat. And then lastly, we tighten these guys up here. That's the way I've always done it. Never had an exhaust leak come back to me. So that's how we're gonna continue doing things here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the car up in the air 
secure that pipe back there it goes on the side of the cat and like i said secure the two uh middle ones and then come back up here and do these four so let's get it okay so we hooked up the exhaust pipe to the cat like i said we're starting at the bottom we put in new uh exhaust nuts this is the hose that i was referring to that is a pain in the ass excuse my language but it is this clamp here once you uh get these two pieces separate this hose from the cat it is a pain in the butt to get that thing realigned and together and uh once you do you can pretty much have a victory dance because it is that type of excitement once you get it all together <laughs> um we went ahead and tightened up the bolts up there for the bracket for the center of the cat now we're going to drop the car back down and we are going to tighten up the cat to the turbo catalytic converter is officially completely bolted in uh, so the torque specs for the nuts sorry the nuts and then the bolts are 18 foot pounds 18 foot pounds um when it comes to exhaust, I personally don't really like that torque spec. That seems a little bit uh, loose to me. So what I usually do is I'll torque them down. I'll do like th three trips. I'll do 18, 18, 18, 18, and then I'll do it again, and then I'll do it again. And then I'll take my ratchet with 13 millimeter on it and I will go an extra quarter turn in a crisscross fashion. So I'll go eight uh, extra quarter turn here, then the nut down there, then the, I'll come back up and do this one, and then I'll come up and do this one, and then I will uh, be done with it. Just because I'd rather that be a little extra tight than under tightened, and then I have to go back in and tighten it down more because of an exhaust leak, and you'll be able to smell that right away if it's leaking, so. Um, but anyway, on to the next portion, our heat shield. Yay, that means we're almost done here. Um, so let's get this guy on here. Catalytic converter heat shield has been installed. After we installed the heat shield, we went ahead and installed the coolant pipe that we were talking about that also carries the heater hose. And we replaced the gasket. That's a one-time use gasket for the coolant pipe. Um, attach the coolant pipe via bolt here that holds the heat shield and the coolant pipe and then also don't forget there is a bolt that's down here that goes in between that holds it here as well and then don't forget to secure the hose to the therm electronic thermostat here so next we will be installing the AC line which runs from the AC compressor to the evaporator. So let's get that installed now. All right, our AC line is in now. So we got it secured with the 10 millimeter nut back there at the evaporator. We also secured it back to the bracket over here. Um, our 10 millimeter bolt here, and then obviously the 10 millimeter nut there. So, next, the, what we're going to do here is we're going to put the cowl and that support brace bar that comes across here like this. We're going to put that back on. And once we put that back on, that's pretty much going to be it as far as the oil cooler repair is concerned. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the valve cover um, that was part of the timing chain cover job the air cleaner um, all the wiring crankshaft pulley the belt cover for the harmonic balancer and uh, fill it up with coolant recharge the AC and uh, you know what I'll go ahead and throw that footage in as well um, once everything is done, I'll throw in some footage of the vehicle running and inspecting for leaks and all that. So that way we get the full repair under one video. 
That way you guys can uh, kind of see everything that took place and see the accomplishments that we have made. So yeah, let's get this thing put all back together. So we got the cowl on, we're fitting the wiper blade arms back on now. Uh, the trick I wanted to show you guys, very simple, nothing too complicated. Uh, when we go to install the wiper arms, the thing I always try to do is I look at the wiper blade and I kind of just take a mental note of where the back side of the arm is and the front side in comparison to the distance of the top of the cowl here. So I try to make them equal distance. So typically I try to go one and a half fingers, which is what I got there and what I got on the front. And then when it comes to the other side, I always like to line up the back side of this with the front side of this. So I can go up a little bit more on this one to line it up there, which I'm gonna do. And always make sure that the wiper blade is in this black area. You don't want it way up here because then it's not gonna be aligned correctly and it's not gonna work properly. So just keep that in mind. Well, we're gonna get these nuts on the wiper blade arms and torque them down to 21 foot pounds, put the caps back on. And once we do that, we're going to go ahead and install the valve cover with the brand new valve cover gasket. We're gonna reinstall the crankshaft pulley down there with a new bolt and torque it down. And then we are going to reassemble the whole top portion of the engine along with electrical fuel and all that good stuff. All right, everybody, we got this thing all put together. Our fluids are full. We got the five and a half quarts of zero w30 full synthetic oil down in the engine we filled up and bled our cooling system for the engine our cooling system for the turbo everything's assembled i just went for a 15 mile test drive everything checked out fine no leaks no scan no uh stored or active dtcs in the system so this bad boy is ready to go we also recharged the ac um so please everybody do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, share this video with anybody you think needs to see it. Um, check me out on Instagram, alpha underscore technician. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.